inspire. And then there are moments that really inspire. My next guest is someone that's an example of what happens when you dream and you dream really big. The brand is Mansu. Her name is Palisa Mukubu. The global fashion industry is estimated to be around 1.7 trillion US dollars. In South Africa, the industry's contribution to the country's GDP is 1 billion and is a great vehicle for job creation, particularly in the manufacturing sector. But fashion is a lot less about the glitz and the glam, but a whole lot more blood, sweat and tears before anyone is given their flowers. Today we chatted to one icon, a legend in our local fashion industry, who continues to show her great creative genius and business acumen. back because you know when you and I were chatting uh, last time air, yeah um, you spoke of the fact that you don't get even a moment to sit and reflect mm -mm. let's take it back so that we can do that right? yeah when was the first time you thought this is for me no I mean I left in the middle of classroom you yeah. know I was a, I was a fashion student yes. in my first year yeah. Uh, and I left in the middle of class. Like back then we had short breaks. Yeah, yeah. I left during short breaks because yeah. it was like November. I was thinking, let me yeah. try and get a job as a salesperson yeah. for December. And then and then I left and I went wearing a skirt that I had made and a, and a, and a top. So I walked into Stone Cherry at Rosebank because I you know, identified with the store and, and the brand. And the owner, Kenzie, was behind the store and I didn't have to say anything. I think my wardrobe just kind of spoke for me. She liked everything that I was wearing and kind of hired me on the spot. And you didn't have to ask in a way? No, I didn't, I didn't ask ah. for the job. I went to look for ah. a job. I didn't have to ask for it. She just looked at you. Yeah, and yeah, the, and clothes, the wardrobe. The wardrobe did the job. You, you, it's you, very you. important to look the part <laughs> because you, well, especially in my industries, that's why I really do... Uh, you know, love the brand and I represent it as much as I can. And, you know, the passion was there, mm. but the journey must have been, as you said, it, it was the long. The journey, I, yeah. I had no idea about this journey. Nobody told me. There wasn't anyone I could ask. There wasn't anyone. I didn't know anybody who was doing I knew a few women in the neighborhood who made clothes, mm. but none of them had been picked out, you know, the way that I was. Mm. I didn't know any younger. I was the youngest at Stone Cherry. I was the, I, I, I was the most. I was the most hardworking, you know, because and I say this with I, I say this as a fact because um, because I I wish Stone Cherry was still you know around. I feel a bit like a you know like the the girl that kind of you know stood the test of time. I mean even the brand is not is you know it's no more. But I. They they groomed me, yeah. or I had the stamina yeah. to kind of make it this far. So then there must be something about school that wasn't enough because you walked out. You yeah 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 yeah. It's it's the passion. The drive was too much. I was too excited about uh, about just being a creative and knowing it. Because I, I had friends who did not know what they wanted to do. Mm. So for me to, I was the only person who knew how I felt mm. and what I, and, and, and had the urge. So mm. I, I followed it. And many times it meant when my friends went to parties, I went to a fashion thing alone mm. at 5 p.m., you know, kind of, you know, going to find it. Yeah. And I just told my mom, like, I will make a plan mm. that many times it meant I needed to walk alone. But also, you see, I, I knew that it would be, I would be in the arts, in, you know, in the creative space. I didn't know that it would be fashion. Okay. It's my mother after matric who, again, we didn't, we've never had, a, we've never had a sit down conversation of what are you going to study after school? We knew that it would be in the arts. So mm -hmm. the day I went to inquire about an art course was literally just that. Go and inquire about an art course, see which one you'll, you know, vibing with. That was the conversation the night before. And then when I left the house in the morning, she said, she was at the end of the house and I was literally out the door. Yeah. And she said to me, why don't you try fashion design? Did it resonate at the time, the fashion no, design? No, I thought, let me just cab, catch a cab. I mean, I wore, you know, it's good that I'd probably tore, like, you know, I, I, I was wearing, you know, probably one of her dresses or something like that. So. I knew I had a, you know, a style sense, you know, unique sense of style, but 
not at the time, not in a form of, uh, you know, education, like it's something that I could study or I, I really did not think about it. I didn't think about it. it. It's so inherent, you know, in me. I, I, my, my, my dad is is a creative. My brother was a graphic designer. I was already living around art. So when I got to school and fashion had the shortest queue, I was like, <laughs> fashion I can leave early. Fashion had the shortest queue. Fashion had the shortest queue. So I joined that queue, and that's how it started. That is honestly how it started. So that that must have come from your internal conviction. I had to do it. I couldn't breathe without it. Oh wow. I, I couldn't. I wouldn't find joy in the party if I, I wanted to work so much. I'm a worker bee. Mm. I, I really wanted to work. I see it now. I'm not proud of being a workaholic. I'm not proud of it, but I, it is, it is my, it's my reality. Mm. I have to work. When I'm a little fidgety at home, they say, don't you have a project or something <laughs> to do? Like, come up with something. Come up with something, like keep yourself where you're better when you're, yeah. kind of you know working so it's very important for me to kind of this is lovely to just kind of sit and you yeah. know talk about this and and that's the thing you went into a brand that was revolutionary a game changer revolutionary game changer in such a in in such a, pr a, a profound yeah. way um that inspired so many young people yeah. that inspired an entire culture and yes. we sit here today you say you know i'm sad it's not there anymore yeah you must have learned something from watching that kind of everything everything a lot of things I, I learned a lot of things um that i still use you know till today i have a very good relationship with kenzie mm. um we reconnected just a couple of years ago and that was a beautiful 360 moment for me because again there's a sense of you know loneliness in the in this quest so to kind of have her you know next to me you know to have her someone that I can, that i can call I feel seen, I feel acknowledged, and um, and um, and that is humbling to me because it, it I won't forget where I come from. I think I just wanted to work, like I said, you know, there was a, a there was a there was a time when I just wanted to work. Mm. I did not know where I was going. I was too young to know where I was going. I just I just knew that if I I just knew that this is a time to just consume myself yeah. with it, and then I will know. And then I, and then obviously I appoint people in my life to kind of tell me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've I've always been a student. When I when I bumped into a designer, and I would I would I always had questions in my pocket for any design anybody who was in the industry, be it a show producer. Or if I bumped into someone that I was you know of a higher rank you know in the industry i always had questions be it i bump into you on the lift you know in in the lift or it doesn't matter i'm gonna hit you with three questions and i'm gonna take something from it and that's how i honestly learned and got through the those those earlier years for me it's about being self-assured about who you are and your own identity that we can see this is Manso, right yeah i cannot confuse it with anything else yeah. that's the thing but you must start with the conviction in knowing that this that doesn't look like anything else is good. Yeah. Is is what I want to say to the world represents me. Yeah. Where did that come from? The conviction, I think, is just something that, that yeah, it, that's, that all stems from, a, you know, a sense of a self that is very strong. That's something that I have. I had it when I was my daughter's age. How incredible is that? I, I had that. That that I have. That 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 I've been given. That just knowing yeah. that I am good, mm -hmm. good, good enough in my worst no. day. Ah. My worst day. I'm good. <laughs> that I just that is something that I'm grateful for. I've never doubted that. And I think it's a personality, it's a character thing. You you it gets built through, I don't know, you know. A tough life, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So you've always known this is it. This was it. This is the life. Did yeah. you ever feel like walking away? Unfortunately not, guys. What? Unfortunately not. Oh. Unfortunately not. Like, if I, when I have a bad day, like, it's, that's all it is. It's just a bad day. I wake up tomorrow. And I'm a better person for it. I just, I've never wanted to walk away. I have been down and out. Mm. I have had reason to walk away. Mm. I have had 
many reasons to walk away. I've had many days, many bad days, many horrible mistakes. I've made many horrible mistakes. Mm. I've cried over fabric. Ah. <laughs> I've cried over prints. You know, I've cried over clients. I've cried over the littlest things I have. And, um, and then I still picked up, I picked myself up the following day and kind of, you know, carried on. But I have to say, I have to, I've, I've appointed people in my life um, along the way who help me to pick myself up. I, I have that in me. I can, I, can, I can have a chat with myself. I know how to do that. Mm. I can have a chat with myself. But I need someone to back me up. You know, I need somebody to back me, someone who knows me, someone who loves me and supports me and knows my journey and, and you know, knows my dreams and uh, believes in me. Yeah. yeah. So it must have been one big validation when H&M said, look, listen, <laughs> let's just, what, do you want to work with us? Do you want to work with us? That's sort of. I what it was, right? Came, I don't know where they came from. Let me tell you, you know how you get a call about a possible job yeah. and then and then before you get the call that you got it, you know, the confirmation, you kind of pray about it, that, you know, you hope to get it. This is the one deal I did not pray about. I did not, I didn't hope to get it because I knew that I wouldn't. I'd never, I don't, I'd never gotten anything like that. I was so used to kind of being overlooked and kind of striving in my underdogness. You know, kind of being content and kind of ruling the underdog space mm. and being a, you know, a dog of the underdog. I was so good with that. I was so good in that space, very comfortable. So I did not think they would pick me. I mean, they selected, they shortlisted three designers in the continent, one from South Africa and two from other parts of the world. So I knew that I was not going to get it. I did not think I would. And so what happens when it does? So, so when it does... <laughs> I'm so crying. I'm crying. I'm so crying now. And the whole world starts crying. And, and the whole world, world starts crying. crying with you. Yes, the but... whole industry starts crying. Yes. Everyone starts crying. Yes. Because no one thought it would happen to me. I start crying now. Yeah. But the reason I didn't think about it is because I was very pregnant when it happened. So I was winning in my under. I was winning. I was like, if I don't get this, I'm having some kind of baby. Okay, be it, be it an industry baby, a fashion project, oh, but I'm winning, right? I'm, I'm producing something nonetheless. <laughs> I'm producing something. So I wasn't stressed about it. Um, so, but they didn't know that I was pregnant. So I thought, oh my God, now I just got this big deal. And I, I have this other big deal that I need to. It was a bit rough. Like, okay, so now I have it. Do I tell them? When do I tell them? Do they just watch me do show? Do they just watch me show? Is it going to hurt me? You know, in some way, I'm a woman. I, I really want this baby. I probably want this baby more than I want, you know, the H&M baby. Do you know what I mean? But very, very kind. Very, very kind bunch. So... I, I, I cry, the whole country cries, everybody sends me crying emojis like for a whole month or a, a whole year. And then, then I start working harder than, I, than I'd ever worked in my life at that point. I thought when you get the break, you kind of get the break and you can chill now. No. no, when you get the break, that's when the work starts. That's when I started working really hard and turning up the volume on everything. Yeah. On everything. I liked wearing big dresses before. Now I like them bigger. Yeah. Yeah, now I need a bigger dress. Everything just a little, just in my expression. What did that moment do for you? I mean, you say you always yeah. had it. But there must have been something. No, that moment, I mean, that moment was like a badge of honor. Mm. It was like I'd gone to a war of many, many years. Mm. And... And I was finally, you know, being recognized as the front lady of, you know, the troops. I, I, I really, and, I, and, I, and, I, and then I looked around and I, you know, reflected on the history of the industry, you know, the fashion industry. And I realized that there's never been a it, moment like that. There's never been a moment like that in, in the continent, in the country, yeah. in my family. Mm. And 
and I got really, really emotional, but I, and also felt a huge sense of responsibility now, which I love. I love responsibility. I'm a responsible girl. I love responsibility. I love, I think it's that maternal thing. So I, I love to take care of the industry, you know, young designers. I, so again, I w was, I just kind of basked in that feeling and and used it and used it and started telling everyone so so back then how I, I, so i left school remember i left i left school in the middle of class and then i i i went I, I got a job and immediately after i got a job i started telling people how i was going to be this great designer now right now yeah in your career with your brand what do you wish you knew back then that you know right now at the very beginning when you started? Well, one of them is that I would have focused much earlier. I definitely would have done that if I, if I knew. I, I, because I knew, but then I played for like a good couple of years. I've been doing this for 17 years. So I played for a good eight, you know, or nine. And, and playing doesn't mean that you won't get to do fashion week and travel the world. You'll get to do all of that, but not at the highest level. Yeah. But when you focus, uh, so I, I feel like if I if I knew how long it would have taken, I would have not wasted those years. Mm -hmm. How much a team m means, I would have made different decisions when it came to, uh, you know, some people in the past. Because, you know, teams come and go. I have a, I have a good team now. I mean, I've got people who've been with me for 10 years and... Um, but I, I've also lost some good people in, in, you know, along the way. And I would have, I would have uh, made different decisions, I think. So you get this big international deal. Yeah. You do establish a great brand. Yes. But I get the sense, the drive in you wants more. What then is your moonshot? What gives you that sense? Oh, <laughs> darling. <laughs> I do. Do I want more? I think uh, that I can do more. I think that I was built to do more. And I think it's the right thing to do more. And I'm in that concept now of legacy. I'm really interested now in the concept of legacy. I'm really interested. I'm older now mm. also. I'm older now. I've spent a lot of my time doing this it better mean something to me or to someone or make some kind of, you know, a difference. Um, I want more, but there are some parts that I could do, you know, kind of less with, I, mm. less off. Like I want more, but I don't want to work so hard, but I, I have to, I have to do it. And, and that's the struggle. It's, it's, you know, the ba the balance. And it's something that I want to be open to, enough to talk about, you know, with, with young people. It mustn't, it's not, it's not that I have, the, I have energy for my life I, and, and what I do. I, I have energy for all areas of my life. I have dreams for all areas, areas of my life. I have dreams for my body. I have dreams for my hair. I have dreams for my family. I have, I have many dreams. It's, this is not the only one. So I want to have energy and stamina for all of them. Hmm. We'll dream on. Uh, dream on. Dream on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank dream you. on. Dream Thank on. You. Thanks yeah. for coming through. Thank you.